This place is called Musile di Piave. It's approximately 17 or 18 kilometers to the east of Venice. I got this far last night and there was a bit of a problem on the road. There was a blockage. So I thought I'd just come and sit here, have something to eat. And when I uh, got my uh, dongle out, I noticed what a good internet signal it was. So I thought I'd just stay here and do some work. And I was enjoying myself so much that I worked until well gone midnight. Which I think was quite clever. Though I, I did go to sleep in front of the computer at least twice. So, um, I don't think there's a great deal to see here. Because this town was destroyed in the First World War. According to this monument, St. Barbara protects men in all forms of difficulty and danger. And that comes from the Artillery Museum, which is here in New Zealand, Piave. As it turned out, St. Barbara did do a particularly good job here during the First World War. It looks old, but I'm convinced that this dates the 1920s, when the town was reconstructed, although it's rare to see a tower, which is that young. That's for the Sardinian Grenadiers, 1659. Fortunately, I can't say anything about that because I don't know about it. This is Victory Square, Piazzale della Victoria. And uh, here we have a statue of an Italian soldier. Who's, in the right hand, he's got a rifle with a bayonet on it, and his left hand, he's got a bugle. Uh, that's not a good idea if you're running forward, I think. I would uh, dispense with one or the other, probably the bugle. Uh, anyway, that's what he's doing. Now, here we have the, there's the bridge of the River Piave, which I filmed before, actually, when I was in Europe 2007, when I drove across it. And the front in 1917, and it was roughly a year from October to October, it got this far. The Austrians advanced to the River Piave, and if you look at from where they started their advance, that's really quite some distance. It's now well inside uh, what Italy's borders were in 1915. The advance from Caporetto, uh, the name of the, the battle uh, area, is um, it, it, I think it's one of the most impressive advances in. Western Europe in World War One. The only the only other one I've come to compare it to, I think, is the Allied advance uh, in the late summer and early autumn of 1918 in France, in my opinion. And uh, this town was actually destroyed. Now, uh, my impression was that the Austrians actually crossed here. Uh, and uh, the front was somewhere down there, but I might be wrong on that, and I'm sure that somebody will correct me on, on, on that one. On, for most of the length of the Piave, what became the, uh, the front, and uh, it wasn't actually um, turned until the battles at uh, Vittorio Veneto um, in uh, late 1918 the latter part of the war, almost at the end of the war. And by the time that had happened, uh, Bulgaria uh, was already out of the war. So, um, and uh, Austria had major problems uh, in Germany. That's the River Piave, quite wide here. And the 
it exits to the sea. It's around, what, 10 kilometers or so from here, probably even less than that. And along the bridge, somebody has put some flowers. Isn't that nice? That's very good at the council to do something like that. And it's very, very attractive. And we can see that they've done the same thing on the other side as well. Great the amount of bicycles that are, that's here. There's a sign there saying this is under video surveillance. Well, this it is, I'm doing it. There we go. Sign. Piave, a river which is sacred to the motherland, fatherland, whatever, Patria. That's because of the battles I just mentioned. monument to the volunteers put up on the 10th of September 1978. Uh, the volunteers who died for the honour of Italy, as it says here, and who remain proud in the memory. It doesn't say the memory of who, of course. Um, which, in all honesty, is not particularly my opinion, as Italians don't know a great deal in general about what happened here, although there's plenty of mining of it. Although, in all honesty, not teaching people history is not a bad thing in my opinion. Just history tends to lead to more problems. I stopped here last night because there was a hold up on the bridge or somewhere around here, I don't know where. And uh, it wasn't a very long one. But I thought, I'll just stop here. It looks nice, and I drove to where I drove. And it's a very nice place to be. Very pleasant. It's yet another place I think I could stay here quite a while. Also, it must be very nice to cycle down to the open sea. Uh, so follow, follow the Piave and you could, on the bicycle you could even get to uh, Yezolo, Lido di Yezolo on the, on the bicycle quite easily and uh, my father went there I think this is one foreign tour no he once went to France as well and I think that was maybe in the late 1940s or something uh, but he, he came here and off, he, was, he was talking about it quite often and uh, went to a lead of the years ago. He didn't bother with the banks. He had then been in the 60s. I think, that was, I think it was the only time he actually left the UK other than that one trip I mentioned earlier to France and the, during the Second World War. What a colour. I did some work for Benetton around, uh, I think it was in the late 80s, and uh, I, I translated their publicity materials, and I, I recall from that that they were originally started up somewhere, somewhere around here, called the River Piave Clothing Works or something like that. I know that Benetton sent, said to me, look, they want to be more Italian. And I said, well, I, I put it in as it should be in English. Anyway, they, they backed down eventually. They wouldn't sound as though they were Italian. They were a bit of a more Italian flavour, but I thought I'd done that quite well. But I had to break down complex sentences into simple ones, as we tend to do in English anyway. Gone night. And it's a bit of a right now. It's quite hot. But it's, uh, it's not the same heat as I had in uh, Sicily. Uh, it's, it's, it's a wetter heat. It's uh, not as comfortable as the dry heat. So that's my little walk over. 
But um, I'd like to say that I, I came to this place with the Tom Tom Centre on the other side of navigation. And I have been here before, hold the road, but many of the places I went to I wouldn't have found if it hadn't been for the uh, satellite navigation. And as a result of that, uh, I feel as though this has given me a, a new lease on life. Now, I have been here before I came here in the car, but with, there's a certain element of fear with the camper van. Uh, will there be low bridges? Will I be able to not go down some one-way street and not get myself out and all the rest of it? And uh, now, with, the, with, with, with this sat-nav, uh, I feel... So, uh, I've got a great amount of freedom. It was a, a great buy. I'm glad I managed to get over my arrogance of thinking I don't need something like that. The answer is yes, I do need something like that. This is the square of the 18th of June, and on this monument, put up on the 8th of January 1930, we see. The words, protected by God, triumphant and almighty, I think I would say, translate that as. And the fact of the matter is, this town, if it were protected by God, then it needs to get another security uh, service in operation, because the place was destroyed in the First World War. Uh, so, clearly, it wasn't protected very well. So I went to the market and I've got to say that there's a major difference between here and the south. Um, in the market I, I bought some cheese and the lady asked me if I had uh, two cents extra and I thought oh, that's pretty mean of her. In, in the south everything's rounded up or down. But I noticed in the shops as well that when you give them one ten for us and it costs one seven, then they give you three cents back. Uh, in the south, uh, that doesn't happen at all. Although having said that, occasionally when it, uh, it works out to one's own advantage, but uh, effectively everything is in units of ten, or occasionally even more. I mean, you could hand over two euros for something that costs one eighty-seven and not get any change at all. I think it's, uh, the attitude here is probably, well, it is <laughs> positive. Here's the lawn red, and this morning on the side of the road there was parking. Uh, when you live in a camper van and you find a lawn red with parking immediately in front, you take it and you, and you go ahead and you do your lawn The thing is, I was thinking, I can probably make it until I get to my mother's place now and uh, get it all done in comfort. I'll make you sure that my towels, I don't know. So I had a very nice walk out. I've come back and I've got my breakfast there. Various cheeses I bought here um, and uh, olives I brought with me. And uh, well, you know, still have a, a day job so I've got to I'll be doing some work while I eat. But it's a very nice place here and I'm very glad I actually stopped here.